What is going on everyone? It is week one of the college football season. Talking season's over. Now we're just going to talk about what's actually happening on the field. And I got my buddy Cole Kublik here to help us out. Cube, uh, you can catch him on Jocks in the morning, 7 to 10 with Greg McElroy. They got a great show there. You can also catch him on SEC Network. And you can catch him on every episode of Head to Head this year as we predict, we break down, we talk about everything there is to know about Auburn football as they get ready for this upcoming season. And we also want to thank our sponsors, Alabama Cattlemen's Association. We appreciate you because beef is what's for dinner. The game we're talking about today is going to be Auburn Mercer as they get ready for week one of the season down in the plains expectations for Auburn this season. Cole, I just, you know, obviously this is our, our first episode and I realize that this is a prediction show and we're supposed to break down the X's and O's and who's going to do what and what's the matchup's going to be, but let's be real, it's Mercer. I think the bigger storyline here is obviously what Auburn comes back with. There was some off-season, you know, some, some chaos that happened, but now it's time to reel it in. And I think Brian Harson has really done a good job of that, just trying to get people focused and say, look, I'm your coach, I'm here, nothing's changing, and um, we're going to go out and perform on Saturdays. That's, that's the goal, that's the game plan. So overall, your thoughts on this Auburn football team, just kind of give us the base level of, of what you're excited to see from this team. Yeah, I think not so much just Coach Harson sort of rallying the truth, but the leadership that he had as well. Coming off February, March, the investigation, which just completely ended up being bogus in my opinion. Guys like Derek Hall, John Samuel Shanker, you take Big B has reported that he might hit the portal, but now he's back. So I think a lot of those guys really came together with some other senior leadership to say, we want this guy as our coach. This is actually what we need as our coach. That shows a lot of maturity. On the field, what they have coming back, I've started two spots, tailback and then up front on defense. Uh, I think you have an opportunity to get a freshman that helps that group of tailbacks. Damari Austin, who comes in, we know what Tank Bigsby can do. We know what Jarquez Hunter can do. If those two are healthy, it could be a heck of a one-two punch and then maybe a little bit more added in with the true freshman that could help you throughout the course of the season, maybe offload some of the carries. Uh, and then defensively, I'm a big fan of this defensive line. It sounds like Jason Jones, the Oregon transfer, is really coming into his own under Jimmy Brumbaugh, the new D-line coach. He's the only real SEC prototypical interior defensive lineman body that Auburn has. Now, it doesn't mean Marcus Harris can't play. It doesn't mean some other guys won't be able to help, but that's the guy that I view when I say SEC D-tackle or SEC nose guard. They need to look like him. I would, I would kind of love to get your take from what you see from TJ Finley. Now that he is the starter, he is the guy. Um, again, we might see Robbie Ashford, but just your thoughts about him as a quarterback and how he can lead this team. I was asked 2,000 times from spring football until now, who's going to be all them quarterback? Who's going to win the quarterback job? And the one thing that I tried to bring up in every one of those conversations, Lauren, was do not discount the fact that TJ Finley got all the reps with the ones in spring practice. That's where you take positions. Guys go into spring ball and you can take positions there. I think TJ used it to improve his technique, his fundamentals, by delivering the ball with a little bit different tempo and velocity, something he didn't do well last year. I think there's still development left in TJ Finley. Going back to what Coach Harson said about guys can get better, I think you'll see a guy that has a little bit more poise, that understands not every ball has to be a fastball, and then we'll have a good understanding of the offense, which ultimately, if you can just run the offense, you're gonna have a chance to go out and be successful, especially with those running backs that he's gonna have behind him. So I realize these first two games are obviously gonna kind of just be, let's, let, let's look and see, let's peel the layers back, let's see what Auburn's working with, and then obviously prepping and getting ready for week three. So just as we get into the predictions, I realize there's no need to really break down Mercer and really give us a huge scouting report on what this team does, but what are maybe one or two things you really want to see from this Auburn football team and then give me your prediction. I want to see the offensive line work together, continuity. Um, it was proven last year in college football, if you studied it, you can be a great, not just good, but great offensive line and not have a bunch of NFL draft picks. The operation of the offense by TJ, getting to the line of scrimmage, getting checks that you need. If you're on a motion or shift, guys, the understanding of where to do that, how to do that. And then I want to see some of these young receivers. We can say, oh, well, the first two games are just ironing out the kinks. First off, you only get so many opportunities to play college football. 
I mean, there, there's only so many of them every year. You're probably gonna get nicked up, dinged up at some point in your career. You might get your position taken away. So you have to take full advantage of every time you get to go put that uniform on. There are some questions that need to be answered, but also you just wanna go out and play. Go compete, go have fun, play hard, and then build upon that. Yes, there are games that Auburn should win, but you still need to utilize those as building blocks to become a better team throughout the course of the year, like you said, leading into a team like Penn State. All right, prediction. Uh, I think Auburn wins this game 42-7. I think Mercer does get one. It's a very tricky offense. You'll see like some Notre Dame box. You'll see some wing T. You'll see some triple option stuff. Then they'll spread you out. I had Mercer against Alabama last year. I had him against Sanford in the spring two years ago. It is a very difficult offense just to understand and to recognize and read. So wouldn't surprise me if they bust one off, get a guy uncovered, hit a wheel route, something like that. But I don't see them consistently being able to move the ball against that Auburn front. All right, I'm going 38 to 10. I'll give Mercer 10. Um, again, I'm looking forward to seeing this Auburn team. Like you said, just get out there and play. Let's see how much TJ Finley has grown, how much he's matured, and how much he's really sort of taken that leadership role you talked about. I think that's one thing I'm looking for. And then on the defensive side of the football, um, just the, the defensive line, we talk about that. I think this is going to be a, an even better defense than maybe we saw last year. Maybe a little concerned about the secondary and what they bring to the table. but. Uh, again, let's just let them go out there and play. It, it's football season. It's, it, it's time to get excited. And uh, I think this will be a good building block for week two and on into week three for that Penn State matchup. We love you, Cole. Have a great week. Brought to you by Alabama Beef Farmers and Ranchers.